So first, I'd like to address the elephant in the room here and go ahead and apologize for the complete lack of content here lately. I mean, such is the life of a working class father of two. Um, I just kind of want to catch you guys up on what I've been working on here lately. And I've been messing around with my NeoVim config a lot and decided to go with an init.lua over an init.vim, but also kind of see if I could go completely pluginless, except for where I cheat a little bit. And I'll get into that in a minute. Yeah, I mean, I have landed on something that I have really started liking. And, and if you'd like to copy any of this stuff, I'll have a link to my GitLab page down in the description. So let's get into it. In my init.lua here, it starts out just like everybody else's does. I map a leader key. So my leader key is space. And the next one, I set the netrw banner to zero because it's annoying and I don't like it. Then I set the browse split to equal four to open in a prior window. I have the alt V or netrw alt V set to one. So it changes from left splitting to right splitting. And the list style set to three because I like the tree view. The title I set to true because I like to have a title at the top. Uh, I set the path to plus equals star star so it will search the current directory recursively. And I have the syntax turned on. I have the backup set to false, compatible set to false because I don't need VI compatibility. Line numbers turned on. I have relative line numbers turned on as you can tell here. As I, you can tell that I'm on line 13 and each line above and below is one. So relative line numbers. I have the mouse enabled in all modes. I really don't use this. I can probably get rid of it, but whatever. I have ignore case set to true and smart case set to true because I like to have case insensitive searching in my doc, you know, when I'm working on something, unless I capitalize it explicitly. I have HL search or highlight search set to false because I don't like that. I would rather just hit next and go to the next thing that shows up. <laughs> I don't like having a bunch of highlighted stuff all over my... I don't like that. Call me weird if you want. It's fine. Uh, I have increment search set to true. I turned off line wrapping because I don't like line wrapping. I have tab stop set to four. So tabs equals four spaces and shift width set to four. I turned on file encoding to UTF-8. It's by, That's default for me, but I like to ensure. I have the pop-up menu height set to 10. Show tab line set to two to always show the tab line. Last status set to two to always show the status line. The sign column is auto because that's default behavior, but I'll go ahead and set it anyway. Uh, expand tab set to false. I generally had this set to true, but you know, pick your poison, whatever you like. Uh, smart indent I have set to true as well. Uh, show command set to true because I like to show the command. So if I hit colon and you can see the command down here at the very bottom. Uh, CMD height set to two, that way it shows up as two lines there. Uh, show mode set to true, so if I hit I, you'll see that I go into insert mode, or hit V, you'll see I'm in visual mode. Uh, scroll off set to eight, so if you actually look at this bottom number right above my status line, you'll see eight right here. And you'll see if I keep scrolling, that never changes. Same way with side scroll. I set the GUI font to monospace, you know, H17 because I have a 4K monitor here and I wanted a little bit bigger font. Uh, clipboard, you name plus, I think everybody sets that. Complete, opt, menu one and no select. About the same as everybody else uses. Uh, split below equals true, split right equals true because if I want to just run a vertical split, I want it to split to the right. And if I wanted to have a regular split and have it split to the bottom. And I turn terms UI colors on, that way I can have a full color gamut in my terminal or my editor. Uh, I set color scheme to Groovebox. This is generally a plugin. Now, this is where I cheated a little bit. So what I did was actually just download the Groovebox.vim color scheme and put it in a colors folder. So if I hit space E to bring up NetRW, you'll see my colors here. I have Capuchin, Deus, Dracula, Groovebox, Hybrid, Hybrid Material, Nord, and Pale Knight. And I can call any of those. So let's say I wanted to set this to Capuchin. Write that. And down here, I turned the file type plugin on. Now, this is a built in, and I don't really count that as a plugin. And I cheated on this one, and I pulled that plugin and put it in my config by default. So, not necessarily a plugin. And I enabled the wild menu. 
Now the next little bit here is for my status line. So if you look down here, you see all the colors going across the bottom of my editor here. That is my status line. And everything's kind of compressed down right now. So you're not really going to get the full effect. And it's not super complicated. All I did here was just call up some colors, you know, for my foreground and background for each thing I wanted to have, and then called that up here. So my status type, and then status file, and then use percent %L and percent %Y, percent %F, and all that for what I wanted to display dynamically across the bottom of the status line. So status type, status file, status modified, you know, you could have named those anything. So now, if let's say I hit I for insert mode, and then undo that, you'll see the little plus that showed up down here. This shows that it's been modified. Now, status buffer is just telling me what buffer I'm on. And if I wanted to open up another file, I can open up NetRW. And let's say I wanted to open up, let's say, my bash RC. And you'll see that I'm actually on the sixth buffer now. So to get back to where I was, I can just hit tab. And you see, I've got a bunch of stuff in the buffer. And if I want to get rid of a buffer, space D. And I'll get to all those bindings here in a little bit. And here is actually where I'm getting to the mappings. So I pretty much copied this little chunk of Lua code here to set up key mappings. And I, I think everybody has essentially this in their init.lua for their key bindings. So I'll have leader R set to reload my config. So if I change something like I did earlier when I changed from Groovebox to Capuchin, I hit space R and I just sourced my, my init.lua. And you saw the color scheme change. I really don't do much with tabs, but I do have some stuff set for tabs. So leader T will create a new tab. Leader X will close a, the current tab. Leader J, leader K, that will go to tab previous, tab next. Now, the split generation, I have leader V set to a vertical split. So if I do, let's say, space V, and I want it to be, open up my bash RC there, or space S for home slash dot bash RC, same thing. And if I wanted to go in between them, I can go in between them. Instead of hitting Control W and J, Control W, K, H, L, whatever, I just get just take the W out of it. So control H, control L, control J, control K. That goes left, right, bottom, top. Now the buffer navigation, I showed that earlier too, just by hitting tab. And shift tab went backwards. Leader D, I showed that also by deleting a buffer. And control left and control right is what resizes my vertical splits. So let's say I do leader V and then open up the bash RC again. So if I hit Control and L, and then scrolling remaps. So Control D and Control U to scroll up and down by half a page. A lot of people do this already, but uh, I saw this little trick on the Primogen and I stole it. <laughs> so Control D, ZZ, that will center the cursor in the vertically. So if I'm scrolling down here and I hit Control U, You'll see that my cursor moved to the middle and it scrolled up. And control D did the same thing. Now, leader E, I've already showed it off. Space E, that just opens up my NetRW. And all those settings that you saw up top for NetRW, yada, 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 that is what's reflected here. Now, I do also have some other stuff that could be considered plugin replacements, I guess. So let's get into that. So leader I, leader C, and leader F, or space I, space C, space F, in normal mode, will actually create an if statement, a case statement, and function template, so, so to speak. So let me hop over to my other terminal, and I'll show you like a test script file or whatever. And, and let's invim test.sh. You actually just got a spoiler there. <laughs> so all I'm going to do here is do leader I. And that pretty much gives me an if statement all the way down, everything closed out, and it give, puts my cursor in the brackets where I wanted it to be. So I hit U to undo that and do, let's say, leader C. Same thing with a case statement. 
And if I wanted to hop down to the next little at symbol, I just hit in. I like that. So if I hit undo and do leader F, same thing with the function. So I'm going to quit and let's go back to our init.lua. Now here, if I hit J and K or KJ, I will assimilate the escape key. So let's go into insert mode and then KJ. Go into insert mode, JK. It just simulates the, the escape key. Instead of having to reach up and hit the escape key or reach up and hit that escape key, I can just stay on the home row, hit them two keys, I'm back in normal mode. Now here I have automatically closing brackets, parentheses, and quotes. So let's say I get to the end of this line out here and I just hit, let's say my single quotes. It automatically closes it and puts my cursor inside. Or if I go to the outside and then hit double quotes, it does the same thing. Or if I go to, let's say my parentheses or my curly braces or square brackets or let's say, you see, it automatically closes everything. So if I'm editing something in C or what have you, or in a bash script or whatever, and I just hit the double quotes, it automatically closes everything and puts my cursor inside. So I have some more insert mode mappings here. So if I hit comma I, comma C, comma F, it does the same thing with the if statement, case statement, function statement, or functions in my script or what have you in insert mode. So if I just hit comma F or whatever, there it is. Now visual maps, I have leader R set to like a, a search and replace type thing in, in a kind of a said way of doing things. So let's say I want to change map to mapper or what have you. So let me just go to the beginning of the line, go to visual mode and I have map selected. So if I hit leader R and I can change map to mapper and that will change every instance of map to mapper in the whole document. Love that. Now I have control S to sort what I have highlighted here. So if I went here and then hit control S and just sorted everything. Now in visual mode, if I hit capital J, capital K, if I go to visual mode, if I just hit shift J and K, you see how it moves everything around or moves the selected line up and down. That's what I like to do there. And down here at the very end of the file, you've already seen this now since I showed you the test.sh. It runs an auto command for a buff new file, anything .sh. It will pretty much insert home slash dot config in them skeleton .sh into that config. Now I have another one here for this mainly just for me. I mean, I don't see where anybody else would find this useful or it would have a skeleton .md. It's pretty much how I write scripts for the videos and that kind of thing. But skeleton .sh, I like that. I like that a lot. And that is all of my config dot blah. And and that is my complete NeoVim config. It's 162 lines long, one file, no plugins, quote unquote, except where I cheated. But it's very usable. I don't need tree sitter. I don't need LSP. I don't need, you know, a bunch of other stuff like that. I'm not a programmer by trade. And this is fine for what I do. This is wonderful for what I do, actually. And once I've gotten used to not having the plugins from my original init.vim or whatever, this has been great. So that's about all I've got for today. I just kind of wanted to show off what I've been able to accomplish without any kind of plugins, so to speak, in NeoVim. And in, it, in a single file, init.lua, without you know having to source a bunch of other stuff. And you know, if you watch a, if you watch other people's uh, NeoVim content, they're going to have seventeen files sourced for one editor. I mean, I understand breaking things out and having things a little more concise, this, that, and the other, but you can have too much of a good thing, in my opinion. So that's why I made one file. <laughs> 
So if you liked anything that you've seen here and want to implement something like that in your uh, NeoVim config or Vim config, whatever, have at it. I mean, I'll leave a link down to my GitLab in the description and whatever you find there that you want to use. So with all that said, I'm Mike. You're awesome. And I'll catch you in the next one. Later.